What's up guys, this is Skytech Freak and today for you I have uh, a review of the Android Q Beta 4 on the Essential phone. So the way we're going to go about this is first I'm just going to show you guys how exactly you want to enroll into that beta program if you have an Essential device. And uh, unlike for some of the other phones, it's actually much simpler than maybe like a Pixel or some other devices that are supporting the Android Q Betas or Project Travel devices. All you have to do is sort of just go into the Play Store and download this application called the Android, uh, the Essential Android Q Beta. So the app is called the Essential Q Beta and it'll be really easy to find if you're looking for it on an Essential device. Of course, if you're looking on it from another device, you won't be able to find it, but you go onto the Play Store, type in Essential Q Beta, you'll know it's from Essential because that's who the developer will be. So you download the app and once you're in the app, all you have to do is sort of go in and um, Put in some information, so like your full name, uh, your email ID, and then like a device specific serial number. So it's either the IMEI number or some other number I don't uh, particularly remember, but you can always go into device settings and find that number. And as soon as you've filled in that information, all you have to do is sort of go ahead and hit enroll. And then within minutes or within seconds, you go into the settings and you check for an update, and you'll already have uh, an update ready to download and install, which will be the Android Q beta. Uh, of course, now the Q beta 4 is out and this is going to be the last beta until the official release of Android Q, which is, uh, which is slated to be released in August. And uh, so that's how you get it on the essential device. Uh, also, one of the upsides of this is, uh, like for some of the other ones, it comes as an OTA update. So you don't actually have to lose any of your apps, any of your settings, everything that was working in Oreo just uh, or working on your central device from a previous version will just get updated and then your device will be running on Android Q, uh, beta 4 of course. So you don't lose any applications, you don't have to flash something in fast boot or things like that. So this is like just an extremely easy way to sort of get Android Q beta 4. Uh, one thing I should of course mention is that while nothing's broken, so even things like the camera, the phone app, and basically everything else is is uh, working. So everything that was working in, and uh, in Android Oreo is still working. The beta is still extremely buggy, or not extremely buggy, but it's still buggy, so uh, probably not recommended to use as your daily driver. Maybe a good idea to just check it out, uh, see what this is all about, see what the next version of Android is going to be like. Uh, of course, if you do, enroll for it and then decide you want to uh, shift back to Android Oreo because of how buggy it is or because you don't like some of the things that are going on in Android Q, you can always just leave the beta. Once you leave the beta, uh, it'll be a similar like OTA situation where the phone will just revert and you sort of just click on the revert button from system updates and it'll revert back to Android Oreo and uh, you'll be running Android Oreo as per normal. Um, so anyways, uh, that's just me talking about how exactly you get Android Q on the Essential phone. Let's take a quick overview or uh, do a quick review of what all the new features in Android Q for the Essential phone really are. So now that we know exactly how to get this beta on our Essential device, let's take a look at what exactly has changed. And the biggest sort of daily or noticeable change is going to be these like gestural controls. So why don't we go into device, uh, we go into system and the second option in system is going to be gestures now you want to go into the third option which is like the system navigation and what you have what there's three options the three button navigation of the old that we all know and love the two button navigation that we have known since android pi but not a lot of people loved and now there's going to be this thing called fully gestural navigation i wasn't entirely sure that gestural was a word but i guess it makes sense anyways so uh, let's take a look at what this fully gestural navigation is all about uh, so basically in this you swipe up from this like slightly elongated pill but in beta 3 the pill was a lot longer they have shortened it just a little bit but it is still uh, both longer and thinner than the one from the two button navigation. So the way you go home is you just do a quick swipe up to go home from any other application. So let's say you're in the Play Store, you just swipe up and you go home you're from the camera, swipe up, you go home. Um, now to go back, uh, that's actually an interesting change that they've made this time in Android. So as you can see in the two button navigation, there was always a back button on the bottom left. However, this time with this fully gestural navigation, they've done something interesting and 
could be controversial as well. Basically, you just swipe from either one of the two sides, and there's going to be this like arrow that shows up uh, saying back. So whether you swipe from this side or you swipe from the other side, uh, this arrow shows up, and that's how you go back. So like this home pill, which has gotten shorter from the Android uh, Beta 3, uh, the Android Q Beta 3, even this back button has had a visual change. So as you can see, uh, the arrow looks a little different. It was, uh, it's just a line arrow now. It used to be a full, bla uh, a full block in the Android uh, Q Beta 3 or in earlier betas. So anyways, this is just how you go back in this. And of course, something interesting about it is that the arrow will of course change color based on the background. So right now we're in a back, uh, in a white background. So the arrow key is black. And of course, if you're in a black background, like in a white background, the arrow key will be black like it is right now. Uh, speaking of colors and things like that, this is another thing that's actually new and changed in Android uh, Q beta 4 so as you can see is you can go down to display and actually enable a dark theme and this is a system-wide dark theme right so a lot of the applications especially google applications is, as you know will now start supporting dark themes things like keep things like google photos soon and uh, maps etc are going to start supporting uh, a dark or a black theme and that's mostly to save battery life and also it, it has visual appeal this device, of course, does not have an AMOLED display, so the amount of battery you'll be saving by enabling a dark theme might not be as significant as you would think it is. But uh, this is one of the theming options. As you can see, as soon as you go home, other elements of the system UI, like the search bar, uh, of course, notifications and things like that, are also now all um, have also now all uh, turned into a dark mode. But that's also not the only uh, theming option that has been enabled in this uh, latest Android Q. So what you can do is you can go into system and once you have uh, developer options enabled, as I'm sure all of you know how to do, if you don't know how to do it, you just have to go into about phone and hit build number a bunch of times. Uh, but yeah, once you have enabled uh, developer options, you can go all the way down and all the way down, there is a separate sort of section in developer options, which is known as theming. You can change the font. However, there's only two options for the font right now. You can also change the icon shape. So you can leave it to what the developer meant the icon shape to be, or you can change it to a square, a teardrop, a squircle, which is like this rounded corner square, a round rectangle, or the device default, like I said. Um, let's leave it to the device default for now. But what I wanted to show you guys was the accent color. Now, I think. One thing that I've always had a complaint about with the Essential Phone uh, is this sort of like cyanogen mod cyan color as the accent that they use on default. I think pretty much everyone prefers the pixels like pixel blue accent color. Uh, but here now you have the option to change it. So you can change it from things like you can change it to things like black. You can change it to things like purple. Let me just turn off dark mode so you guys can actually see these accent colors better when I do change them. Give me one second. So I'm going to go into display and I'm going to turn uh, dark mode off because I don't have the best camera recording this. But yeah, let's go back into developer options now um, and show you what these accents can actually look like. So I'm going to go all the way down. As you can see, it's this like NYU purple right now. Uh, you can have it be ocean, which is still not pixel blue. And this is one of the complaint I have with this theming option and developer options is that you still don't have the option to make it pixel blue. You have all these other colors like green and the green actually looks quite nice. Uh, you have the device default, which is that sign that I don't particularly like. And of course you can just go black, which is interesting as well. And you can see like all the other elements of the UI will also change accordingly. So your notifications become black when you have it purple, they will be purple. And so that's one of the other theming options that I noticed. And I, it was really interesting that they have added this. Uh, in this version of Android Q because uh, Android is otherwise, at least stock Android hasn't been that comfortable with allowing you to change things or visual elements of the UI. So far, a lot of the third party uh, ROMs that were customized for it, like uh, One UI and all have had theming options, even LG's UI has theming options. Uh, but of course, native stock Android didn't really allow you to change visual elements or themes uh, of it too much. Of course, there's still no like theming option where they like overhaul the whole theme, but they've started adding a little bit of these visual tweaks, which is nice to see in the Android Q beta. Let's quickly also talk about uh, some of the notification changes that have happened. So 
uh, just to get a notification let me just take a screenshot because I don't think I have any notifications right now and if you knew in earlier betas uh, of Android Q you could only swipe in one way to get rid of a notification however they've changed that so as you can see whether I swipe it this way or whether I swipe it that way like I just did you can still get rid of the notification so I'm just gonna swipe it out and now I've gotten rid of this notification uh, another thing that they've changed or at least brought back since Android Pie is that if you have rotation locked um, and you go into an app that allows rotation sort of so you hit this uh, let's say you open it with gallery and you want to turn it around um, sorry I thought I had auto rotate there we go turn off auto rotate and when you turn it this way you get this sort of button that allows you to force lock rotation in the other orientation so if I'm in landscape and I turn it back uh, sort of this icon should show up again there it is and it'll allow me to force it back to uh, portrait mode and it's funny that I was expecting actually when I turned it I was expecting it to show up on the right side whereas they showed up over here that's another thing I want to talk about is that uh, usually we're used to the system uh, navigation or like the three bars in Android even in landscape mode showing up on the right instead of at the bottom but in Android Q it seems that uh, the system navigation does move to the bottom so to go home you will swipe from the bottom here instead of swiping from any from here or something like that that just takes you back um, so yeah you swipe down from there uh, so that's one of the other changes that I did notice in this Android Q uh, beta lastly while talking about notifications like we were there's another thing that have, that has been enabled so you want to go into settings and you want to type in this thing called bubbles right Essentially what bubbles are is basically if you've ever used chat heads with Android uh, Messenger, which is like a default setting that's turned on this basically is uh, The same feature but for other applications that support it. So maybe like Instagram chat snapchat uh, Of course messages and things like that. It basically allows you to do that uh, and you can enable that in the settings um, and we can see it function uh, another thing that happens with notifications, especially about like these chat and messaging applications, smart replies have also gone smarter, so you can mark it as red, you can dismiss it, uh, you can open it, or of course you can like auto reply with a smart reply, which now has much better suggestions. So that's uh, what I wanted to say at least about the notification on the notification side of this Android beta. So speaking of some of these like visual tweaks that have been changed in Android Q, at least in the beta, uh, one other thing we can talk about is the unlock animation. So you can see from the lock screen, if you unlock it, and I'm gonna use my fingerprint to unlock it, you can see that up there, the animation has actually changed. The lock icon is at the top now, and you, when you unlock it, you get that nice animation. This is also to show you that the fingerprint scanner is working. So our fingerprint gesture, so if I swipe down, I'm getting my notification panel, etc. Uh, and things like that so again just to tell you guys that nothing from Oreo is broken there's just a few bugs uh, within some of it other UI elements that have changed of course I showed you how you can change the font but also a lot of the uh, status bar icons have been changed in terms of what they look like so you can see the battery percentage uh, the part of which is empty is sort of like hollow same thing with Wi-Fi uh, if it's not full there'll be like this hollow bar above it so like the icons have changed a little bit you can also uh, in developer options uh, make the battery percentage also estimate how much uh, battery life it has left uh, however unfortunately I don't think that's a very accurate estimation of how much battery life is left it's like based on uh, what you've been doing but I don't think it's very accurate so I turned it off but that is a nice feature to have and if it gets more and more accurate based on the processes that the phone learns that you're doing just like how uh, Android is also learning what you like to keep your brightness level at so there's no auto brightness now there's adaptive brightness similarly if it learns uh, what you usually do with your phone maybe those estimates of how much battery life there is left will become more accurate and then, then it can be something that's uh, more useful to use on your home screen so yeah these are just some of the visual tweaks uh, and just to show you that no real functionality is broken. There's just a few bugs uh, But let's talk about some of those bugs right and to do that Let's go back into this gestural navigation that we were talking about I've already showed you how you go home, which is you sort of just swipe up uh, and To go to your recents you from within an app you sort of need to go to an app and then swipe up and hold and then all your recent panels will show up uh, another thing that you can do is if you swipe that pill front and back 
uh, you actually go into previous or next applications. Uh, now, speaking of like the bugs that I was talking about, when you swipe from this mode, not when you go into the recent screen and then go to another app, but when you're just swiping to next and forward app, what happens is it'll often like refresh the app. I don't know if you just saw what happened, but basically it like that sort of black shutter thing forces the app to restart. And that can be quite annoying if you're trying to go to an app with the process running and then it's just like forcing the app to restart. I think you've seen it a few times. It just happened right there too, where it'll sort of like go black for a millisecond and then uh, there we go. It'll just like refresh the app process. And that can be quite annoying, like I was saying. This doesn't happen, however, when you're in your recent apps and then you sort of click into an application, there's a no lag there's no stutter there's none of that but only when you're swiping from within these does that like tend to happen often and almost once in two times it it's guaranteed to happen like it just did over there and over there right uh another thing that is difficult is like i showed you you can go back from each of these sides so if i swipe back here you get this arrow uh but as you know a lot of these um a lot of the apps in Android actually have a sub menu when you begin to start uh, swiping from one side. And since at least for now, there isn't any option to choose which side you want the back button to work from. So right now it works from both sides. Uh, but of course, if you're trying to go into the menu, that can be a little uh, confusing because if you're trying to go back, you might open the menu and vice versa. So if there's maybe a setting in the final version that allows you to choose only from the right side to go back or only from the left side to go back, uh, that might be something that is helpful. Uh, the last sort of problem or bug or something that I had with uh, this fully gestural navigation, I don't know if it's really intentional, but you can't really easily go into the recent app screen from the home screen, right? So when you swipe up, obviously it brings out the notification panel. And if, you, uh, if you're like trying to go to recent panel, the only way to really do that is from that pill, what you want to have, what you're going to have to do is swipe first to a side and then swipe up. And that's the only way you can get these, uh, get the recent apps from the home screen. I think that's really annoying. Uh, I would prefer to be able to do it somehow from just swiping up and holding or something, but it's not possible. Like I tried a few times. It's just, it doesn't work. You can't go to your recent apps from the home screen. Maybe they meant to do this by design. Uh, maybe they don't expect anyone to want to go into their recent apps from the home screen. So you can still from the home screen, go into next and, uh, forward applications, which is fine. Uh, but if you really want to go into recent apps, you want to first swipe to the left and then swipe up and then hold it. And that's the only way to do it. Uh, once you're in the recent apps, uh, animation, the way to get rid of it is just tapping somewhere else or swiping with the back and then you go back on it. Another thing that they've changed that can be quite useful actually is on the home screen. If you remove something, if you remove this, you actually get an option to undo it so you can undo it oftentimes this happens like if you have a widget with a lot of settings saved and by mistake you uh bin it you do want to un uh, undo that because a lot of times these widgets have like specific settings and all and you have to like reset it up or just it's annoying to like redo your home screen if you've made a long press mistake or something like that and so it's really nice to see that you can go ahead and undo these changes this doesn't happen with uh sort of it doesn't work with resizing widgets. It doesn't work with um, placing them from one place to another on the home screen. It only works with if you remove it, then you can undo removing that from the home screen. So yeah, these are just some of the things I wanted to talk about with uh, the Android Q beta 4, which will be the last beta until this version of Android actually fully launches. Uh, I'm really excited for that version. We can be sure that the essential phone will get it. And uh, as we know, we've been getting all the betas for Android Q on the essential device as well. I've now also shown you for those who didn't know how to get this beta of Android Q for the essential device. I've shown you how to do that as well. So that's really all I have uh, for now. If you like the video or you learned something, please consider liking and subscribing uh, and see you guys in the next video. Thank you.